Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of 52 Authors, 52 Weeks. Today, I am joined by Sabrina Darlene Williams. I have a middle name too, so I like to say my middle name. Sabrina Darlene Williams, who was one of the authors on a book called Take Your Power Back, which is a collection of inspiring stories by real women who have taken their power back. Hi, Sabrina. Hello. How are you? I'm good. So before we talk about this book, Tell our listening, viewing audience uh, more about you, who you serve. We want them to get to know you a little bit before we dig into the book. Great. I am Sabrina Darlene Williams. I go by Sabrina Shine Williams because I am the creator of the Shine Framework. And I work with women that are ready for their next to unsilence their voices. I'm all about us women empowering each other and the fact that we need to start showing up and shining bright as we want to unapologetically. I love it. And I'll just tell you something interesting. So my very first author, Dr. Nisa Jenkins, episode one, week one, she wrote a book called Speak Up. I Can't Hear You, The Voice of a Woman. And it was such a powerful book. But then someone that we both know, um, Shakita Hall Jackson, attorney Shakita Hall Jackson, she wrote a book, We Gonna Be All Right, which is a Black woman's guide to navigating the workplace. Now, you didn't mention this, but you also have over 15 years of experience as an HR professional. So tell us about how your background and the SHINE framework aligns. Yes, very true. I've been a certified HR professional, made it to the <laughs> senior leadership position. And my last position, I was in diversity and inclusion and talent acquisition. And when you're in HR and you are at the top, you get to see different things that other people don't necessarily see. And what I discovered was that a lot of time we, women, and then if you're a woman of color, it seems to be even worse, are not always given the given what you deserve. And sometimes we just accept things thinking, okay, that's all it's they're going to give me, so I will accept it. And they have a whole lot more. So seeing this and seeing how we are not always encouraged to stand up for ourselves, and we are not always empowered to do the things that we need to do, and people don't know what they don't know, I decided that, you know, I need to do something about it. Now, let's be clear. <laughs> It did not happen overnight. I did hit my rock bottom. I was depressed and I forgot my worth. I forgot my value. And I was in the bed for like 15 hours straight one night. And my husband came in the next day and shook me and said, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm okay. But I was depressed. And it wasn't until I started to get around people that helped me understand that, no, <laughs> it's not you, it's them. And unfortunately, some things that have happened in my past stifled my voice, which we will talk about a little bit in the book. And I did not realize it. But I started thinking after the incident with George Floyd, I realized that my voice was being stifled too. I was being choked. And I was being choked mentally, not necessarily physically. And I know that there are so many women out there that are experiencing this and questioning, okay, what should I do? Am I worthy? Should I speak up? And uh, I got with the group and that's what I started doing because I, corporate America is um, a beast. It's an animal. <laughs> And it's not for everybody. <laughs> so you have to know if you're going to do that, make sure that you're ready and prepared. I love it. And before I forget, you are also um, an Army veteran. So I want to say thank you for your service. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of times um, we're so self-absorbed that we don't give others their flowers while they're alive. It's interesting how with the click of a button, you can order some flowers for a funeral, but you need to give folks their flowers now while they are living because they can appreciate them. When they're in that casket, they don't see that you got those flowers. So you got that for you. But at that point, 
but you do that for them so that they can see, oh, somebody really does love and appreciate me. Because that could mean the world, you know, to someone. Yeah. So your chapter, the title, Words Have the Power to Harm and Heal. Tell us more about that. That was an epiphany for me. You know, um, you may have heard and your listeners may have heard when they were young, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never harm me. <laughs> Lie. <laughs> that is not true. Words do harm you. And unfortunately, a lot of times people say things and they may have good intentions. But the impact is what negative, and that's what we have to deal with. I had some words spoken to me as a child, and the words that were spoken. Do you want me to? Do you want me to say them? This is a growth. This is a thirty-minute growth session. It's not scripted, and believe it or not, there's someone that's listening. That's viewing this. They need you to say it so that they can start their healing process. Ooh, girl. I'm going to read it. <clears throat> uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes. I know it, but I'm going to read it. You can't tell your father because he will kill him and go to jail. Those are the 14 words that led me down this path of questioning myself, stifling my voice, because um, my mother actually walked in on a situation you can read about it in a book. And it was, I will say that it was not a uh, situation that an 11 year old girl should have been in with a grown man. And I was so terrified at that moment. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to handle it. And my mom said, you can't tell your father because he will kill him and go to jail. And when she said that to me, I internalized that to me, okay, whatever's going on with you, you just got to be quiet. You can't tell anybody. You can't say anything. And what happened was over the years, I would always fight for everybody else. But when it came to fighting for myself, I wouldn't fight for myself. I wouldn't stand up for myself. And it wasn't until I got into therapy and started doing some soul searching. And yes, I said the word therapy. <laughs> Everybody needs a therapist. It is yes. not, it is not, what's the word I want to use? You know, people think if you go to a therapist, something is wrong with you. Yes, it's right? not taboo. Like crazy. Mm -hmm. It's not taboo. That's the word I was going to say, but I was like, I don't know if that's the word I want to use, yes. but it's not something that you should be ashamed of. Yes, yes. People have gone to school <clears throat> to deal with disorders of the mind, right? Conditions yes. of the mind, the things that happen <laughs> in your mind and to your body, you need somewhere to release it. Someone that has been trained to allow you to release it, but then help you with some strategies to forgive and move forward. Because awesome. oftentimes we're allowing it to hold us hostage and it literally holds us back from growing. And you need to be able to grow. This world has so much to offer but if we don't release the things, we're just going to be in the same place next year that we are in this year. Uh, so I want to just tell you again how the stars just align. So I mentioned to you that when I put out this call, 52 authors, 52 weeks, I went on faith that others would answer the call. And you are one of the 52 authors that answered the call. But on the day, we're recording this on a Friday. This episode will air, you know, in a few weeks. But last night, I kid you not, I was watching an episode of Law and Order Special Victims Unit. And there was a the whole, I guess, premise behind the episode was that one of the captains, his daughter, had been sexually assaulted by the neighbor's son across the street. And I watched how all of this played out. I had never experienced that for myself, but to see it play out on the big screen, and my husband always says, art imitates life, right? So mm -hmm. to see it play out on the big screen, the different emotions I went through as a woman, as a mother, as a grandmother, as a friend, as a mentor, as a leader, as a growth coach, I just started having all these emotions about there are others that have experienced the same thing and they're afraid to tell their mother, they're afraid to tell their father, they're afraid to tell anyone and the people sometimes who we tell are not the right people because they're going to tell you something like, don't tell nobody. Because they're going to think that you are uh, fast. That was, wasn't that the word from back in the day that you mm -hmm. was fast? You, you provoked that, right? 
Or like you said, don't tell your father because he'll kill him. So in this episode, guess what? The uh, sergeant or the captain, he was the captain. He pulled out a gun on the neighbor, the father and the son and all of that. So just watching all of that unfold, watching how emotionally it impacted his wife and not only just the victim, right? To me, everybody who was a part of that situation was impacted. Both sets of parents, both kids, as well as those that were doing the investigation. In some shape, form, or fashion, everybody was impacted. And I know it's just TV, right? But they all need to talk to someone <laughs> to release what happened so that they can move forward. Because the young girl, if she doesn't get therapy, and actually on the episode, they disclosed that she had already been in therapy. So I don't know if it's because her father was a cop or whatever was going on in their household, but the young man who now is going to go to jail, right, for this five seconds of passion or whatever you want to call it, right, all of their lives have been changed. Yes. Yes, yes. And that is so true. People don't realize when you are a victim of any kind of sexual assault, assault or abuse, you have something that's been taken away from you. You no longer feel safe in certain arenas. Certain things will trigger a memory. And sometimes when you've experienced something traumatic, it doesn't necessarily have to be a sexual assault. It could be a violence in an abusive relationship or whatever. Sometimes things happen that trigger that memory. And when it triggers that memory, you may not react to what's right in front of you, you're still reacting to what was behind you. And that's why therapy is so important. Like you said, it helps you to be able to learn how to deal with these things. In my case, I went back to my mother and talked to her about it and said, you know, you said this to me and why? Why did you say that? What did I say? She didn't even remember saying it. And then she says, well, why would I say something like that? Because hindsight is 2020 20, as they say now when you look back at something that you did years ago it's like well why did I do that I should have done it different and a lot of times as you mentioned sometimes you will tell somebody and it's the wrong person or their advice is bad and what I had to learn to do is forgive because <laughs> I was blaming my mother for everything but I realized that she did the best that she could with what with information she had. And what I had to do was make a choice. Am I going to continue to hold that against her or am I going to learn from that and move forward? I wish I had, a, had learned it much earlier so my kids wouldn't experience the things that they experienced, but I didn't. So, you know, with my growth, I've actually gone back to apologize to them because I stifled their voice. I did not allow them to speak up because when I grew up, a child was seen and not her. You don't speak up. You don't say anything. So not only those words that she said, but the environment I was around, that was how we were raised. You just, you don't do those. You don't say anything. You don't speak back. And you're supposed to respect your elders and all those different things. And I mean, for years, I kept wondering, I said, man, I can fight for everybody. Like I said, I was a um, senior leader in the organization. And my team, when it came to my team I was like no we got to do this we got to do this and going back to the shine I had one situation where it was raise time it was time for merit increase and I put in one of my uh, team members for a larger increase and my manager came back and said no we no we can't do that all we can do is this right here Mind you, I'm the AVP of talent acquisition. And so I see all of these increases and raises coming through and I'm in HR. So I see what's possible. And I was like, no, that's not acceptable. And she looked at me and was like, what? What do you mean that's not acceptable? No, this is what I want to give this person because they're behind. And, you know, we went through the whole story and the manager went back. She did some more reviewing. And what she did was instead of just coming to me with what the raise would be, she made sure she brought the person in and told the person, oh, I fought for you. And this is what I was able to get you this much. Remember last time you got this and now I'm giving you this. And the person was like, oh, 
oh, thank you. They were so grateful, not knowing that I put them in for this much and they got this much. And it was a little bit more than the first initial response that she gave me. But that's the thing. We are out there experiencing different things in life that's not necessarily good for us. And what I want to say is that we got to speak up. We got to speak up. I can speak up for everybody else, but I wouldn't speak up for myself. When it was time for me to get that little raise, I let it go. I let well, it go. And you saw what they did with that other person, right? And that happens all too often, which is why both of us, you know, are like entrepreneurship is the way to go for us because you will pay me my rate, right? You will pay me what I am charging because you will never be able to pay me what I'm worth because I know the value of my worth, but yeah. what I charge is what I charge. And we don't question the charges or the fees when we get our nails done, we hair, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Payless, uh, Walmart, Target. You don't, you don't go in there and try to negotiate with them. So right. we have to realize how powerful we are. We have to put the imposter syndrome version of us to the side and say, look in the mirror. Yes, you are worth X, Y, Z dollar amount. Yeah. And don't let anyone make you think you're not. And you have to get to the point where you're comfortable being uncomfortable and you give that dollar amount and they say, oh, that's the amount? Well, yes, it is. And then if they want you to qualify why you came up with that dollar amount, well, you can say, well, you know what? I have 20 years experience in human resources outside of being an army veteran where I fought for this country, right? What I'm going to bring to you is worth more than the dollar amount that I gave you, but that is my rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you can't pay what I'm worth, but you will pay my rate. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's just amazing how people will try to undermine us in their words, how they impact us. But we have to remember that I'm valuable. <laughs> I am valuable. No, what they're paying me is not my worth. It's my rate and they can afford it. They pay other people. Absolutely. And when you work in human resources, you'll be knowing the behind the scenes. I remember working at this one organization and I guess around raise time or annual review time, they have this bucket of money, right? And they've already figured out how much they're giving everybody. But the folks that don't really be doing nothing, the, the top levels, they getting paid all this money when the ones that are actually doing the day-to-day -day work, they're not being compensated for that their work and their dedication. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I really believe that in some cases, employers are not loyal to their people. They're loyal to their brand only, and that's it. They're loyal to their bot bottom line. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and uh -huh. that's it. So, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's the sad reality. And I think about uh, growing up with parents that did not go to college. Um, Because, you know, you talked about your mom, saying, you know, her not remembering. You and I both know children don't come with a user's manual, right? So a lot of times we are raising our kids using the values that we were raised under. But what I'm enjoying watching as the generations behind us, like, so I'm right after the baby boomers, right? So the, that our generation, we started to challenge a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Like my family told me, one of my grandmothers in particular was like, you got a baby. You need to just have a job. Don't worry about going to school. And I'm like, no, nah, I think I need to go to school so I can move further in life. And what she said to me, I, I learned this years later, what she said to me was all she knew for the time that she was born in, right? My grandparents, my grandfather's actually 103 right now. And they were born in the 1920s, right? The 20s and the 30s and the 40s. And so they came right behind a time when our people had struggled, where the women's woman's voice was just starting to be heard, right? So the kids, we were a little bit further behind. And so I had to realize that they did the best that they knew how to do with the information that they had available to them, which was shaped around what they had experienced. Exactly. And so I can't fault them for operating in what they know or what they knew. But this girl here is learning constantly and is realizing there's other ways to do the things. Yes, yes, 
Yes, that I mean, that's one of the biggest thing, learning that there are other ways to do the thing. And when you talk about the fact that they taught us what they knew, some of the things I don't know if you go into that or not in one of your other episodes, but there's generational trauma. So some things are in your DNA and you don't even realize it until you start unpacking what's happening, why things are happening. And I just, my goal, my desire is for every woman, not just women, but everyone to be able to just own their worth and start standing up and understand, (laughs) yes, that, you know, I deserve to shine and I can shine as bright as I want. And it's okay. Me shining bright, has nothing to do with dimming anybody else. This is me, myself, and I. (laughs) I love it. And so um, in your book, you talk about shine empowers organizations to cultivate diverse and inclusive work cultures. And I think that that's something that's lost during the recruitment, selection, retention process. I mean, you talk about that, how to effectively retain and support Black women. Yeah. I, I know in healthcare, and this, I've been in healthcare for 32 years, I am frequently the only Black person in the room. And I am so grateful that I can be in that room and be in that room. I don't always have to say something, but if I do have something to contribute to the conversation, I'm going to say it. And when I say it, I've thought about it. It's going to be powerful and everybody, and and my voice is going to be powerful. So people are going to listen and then say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. But a lot of times when I'm in the room, they look at me, you know, I definitely don't look 50, right? So I look you know, like I'm 30. And so they don't know what I know until I say something, but I'm not afraid to use my voice. And I think that's something that people struggle with every day. And as the parent of a 32 year old who cannot talk and hear, I realized how powerful my voice was. I had to learn how to advocate for her while simultaneously learning how to advocate for me. Yes. Yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. I just feel like with growth and time, the more we invest in ourselves, Mm. the best we'll be because we have to invest in ourselves. Some people think, oh, that's just too expensive. No. It's an investment. What is your ROI, your return on your investment? That Um, part, that ROI is the part (laughs) that will try to take you out. And that's why I spend so much time reading, writing, and reflecting. Because number one, it's healing for me, but it also allows me to grow. And it gives me that strength, that power to pour into others because I've been preparing, right? I've been fertilizing my gifts. And so when it's time for harvesting season, whether I'm pouring into someone else or I'm continuing to pour into myself, because, you know, the business of self-care is the most important business on this planet. Non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. I love it. I love it. So listen, we're almost out of time. So tell our listening, viewing audience where they can get their own copy of the book because we want them to purchase it. And uh, we also want them to learn how they can find you um, and your company because we want them to see what RNS Consulting Group has to offer them. Yes, 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 yes. You can get your own copy of the book at www.iamsabrinawilliams.com um for slash shop and you can find the book right there uh, that's also my website one of my websites and if you sign up at that website you would be able to keep in contact with me and I'll send you information on the different ways you can contact me and the different things that I'm doing I love and it I want to tell your guests one thing show yourself grace make sure you show yourself grace if there's something that you have not done and you've been wanting to do forgive yourself and start I love it I love it. I also want to mention, because you didn't mention, you also are on Instagram, IG, as well as the TikTok. Now, I'm a newer TikTok user, right? So I've been putting my videos out there. It's like back in the days, we had the Encyclopedia Britannica, and now we got TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. So they can find me on Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok. Everything is Sabrina Shine Williams. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm your Sabrina Shine Williams. Follow me and that way you can stay up to date. I love it. Well, listen, thank you so much for being one of 
our guests on 52 Weeks, 52 Authors, and everyone else. I'm Dr. Lisa L. Campbell, the Growth Motivator. It has been an honor and a privilege to bring yet another powerful episode to you, and we will see you next week. Thank you.